Hello everybody, how's it going? So, in this video I'm gonna show you unboxing and review of this Canon multifunction printer and how to connect it via USB, Ethernet and Wi-Fi connections. I also give you some ideas and tips on how to refill your toner cartridge and replace the OPC drum. So, let's get started. In this box we've got a power cord, user manual and drivers. This is front shade cover and the printer itself. As you can see this printer comes without USB and Ethernet cables, so if you're planning to use one of those connections you need to buy that cable in advance. Ok, let's get rid of these protective films. Inside we've got O49 drum cartridge and O47 toner cartridge. The drum cartridge can handle 12,000 pages before replacement and the toner cartridge can print up to 1600 pages. At this point the cartridges are locked and we can't remove them. So let's plug in the power cord and turn on the machine. Next, you need to set the device language, your country, time zone, and the current date and time. Now you can set a pin code for your printer. And finally, you can connect your printer to your Wi-Fi network, but we'll do it later, just select No to finish the setup guide. So, now we can remove these cartridges. I'll make a separate video on how to refill the thermal cartridge and replace the OPC drum. Anyways, you need to remove the screw, next remove this gear assembly, then remove this magnetic roller and pour the toner powder. Finally put all the parts together. In order to replace the OPC drum, you need to remove this metal axle with pliers. Then replace the drum and put the axle back in. Once you've replaced the drum or refilled the cartridge, you have to replace this chip to properly monitor the remaining life of cartridge. But it's up to you, they don't block printing anyway. I'll put the links for the OPC drum, chips and the toner powder in the description. The control panel is pretty simple here, we have keys for the menu navigation, this key resets entered values and returns it to a home screen, just like a home key. This key starts copying and this one stops a job in progress, like printing or copying. And the ID key allows you to copy both sides of the ID card onto one side of paper. Let's see how the copier works. Select copy and press OK. So, we have a bunch of features here. You can set the number of copies. This is density or contrast. Original type, text and photo by default, it's OK. You can also set copy ratio, sharpness and stuff. And finally press the start key. As you can see, the machine is very fast and writes wood quiet. The print quality is pretty good too. I think it's a great solution for a small office or home use, especially considering its price. Moreover, you can easily fill the toner cartridge yourself, which can dramatically reduce printing costs. So, finally, let's connect this printer to a computer. I'm gonna start with a wired Ethernet connection. Simply connect the Ethernet cable to the printer and to an available LAN port on your router or switch. Then go to the menu, select Network Settings, Wired Wireless, select Wired LAN and press OK. This is my printer's IP address, which was automatically assigned by my router. So take a note of your IP. If your IP didn't show up, go to TCP IP Settings, 
IPv4 settings, IP address settings, check settings, IP address. So, like I said, this is a P that's been automatically assigned to the printer. And each time you turn on your printer or reboot the router, your printer will get a new IP. It's not gonna affect your scanner, but your machine may stop printing. So, let's assign a static IP address. Go back, auto acquire, turn off both options, and apply new settings. Now this is static IP address, which we can easily change here. Next, you need to download the proper printer driver, which contains scan gear. Go to your downloads and run this file. Click Next, Yes, select Network Connection, click Next, and click Yes. If your printer appears on this list, then click Next. If it doesn't, click Search by IP address and enter your printer's IP. Click OK and click Next. We need drivers for both, printer and scanner. Click Next. Here you can change your printer's name. Click Next and click Start. Let's print a test page and click Exit. That's quick and quiet printer. And the print quality is great too. Let's move on to the scanner. Windows 7, 8 and 10 come with a built-in scanning software tool, which is Windows Fax and Scan. Click New Scan. In this window you can adjust some image settings and then click Preview. If everything is set to your liking, click the Scan button to begin the process. So, this is just an image, and you can't edit or copy the text. In order to convert a scanned image into a text file, you need an optical character recognition software. The best software on the market is Abbey Fine Reader. It can work directly with your scanner and you can easily convert scanned image into a Word, Excel or PDF file. Ok, now let's connect this machine wirelessly. For a wireless connection, the setup is almost the same. Go to your device menu, select Network Settings, Wired Wireless, select Wireless LAN and press OK. Next select Wireless LAN Settings, SSID Settings, select Access Point, finally choose your Wi-Fi network and enter the password. In the switch entry mode you can select lowercase letters and symbols. Apply and select Yes. So, this is my new IP address and like I said before, I highly recommend disabling DHCP and IP auto features. Now simply install the same driver, enter your IP address, basically the same process as for Ethernet connection. As you can see it prints and scans without any problems. And finally let's see how it works with the USB connection. Don't connect the USB cable until you are told to, this is very important. So first of all we have to install the driver. 
select USB connection and now you can connect your printer into USB port. Finally click exit and right after that you can print and scan. Let's print a test page. Nice and fast and finally let's check the scanner. So, all three connections work flawlessly, and it's up to you to decide which connection you want to use. 